right, so uh, second day of chapter two forward, I'm trying to rewrite complex numbers in the most simple form possible. And what you're going to see here is 7 minus 3i over 5i. Um, we have an Im imaginary number in the denominator of a fraction. So let me just start off by giving you a basic rule of complex numbers. And that is that this is unacceptable. Have a, a complex number, imaginary or complex number in the denominator of a fraction. We want every denominator of every fraction to be a nice, pretty, real number, like 7 or 5 or 10 or anything. It doesn't matter what it is, but we want a real number on the bottom. Okay? What we're going to do to um, create that scenario is use a couple rules of mathematics. The first rule of mathematics we're going to be using is the um, powers of i that we talked about a few days ago. So i to the first power is i. i to the second power is negative 1. i to the third power is negative i. And i to the fourth power is positive 1. And then i to the fifth power would just go back to i to the first power. You multiply i to the fourth, which is 1, times i, gets back to i to the first power. So every four powers of i creates 1. So it just basically keeps subtracting 4 from the power until you get between 1 and 4. And then you get whatever i is. So for example, just to give you a quick example of what I'm talking about there. If I have i to the 31st power. 31 minus 4 is 27, minus 4 is 23, minus 4 is 19, minus 4 is 15, minus 4 is 11, minus 4 is 7, minus 4 is 3. So i to the 31st is the same as i to the 3rd, which is negative i. So any power of i you're dealing with, it's, it can be brought down to one of these four, and then you're going to bring it down to either i to the 1st, positive negative, or positive negative 1. And you'll notice in the possible things we can get out of this, We have a real number here, and we have a real number here. And again, I want this to be a real number. So all I have to do to make this 5i become a real number is I need i to become i squared, because i squared is a real number, negative 1, right? So to do this, the technique involves what we're allowed to do to fractions. What you've learned about fractions since fifth grade when you were starting to add and subtract fractions, is you're allowed to multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by anything you feel like, anytime you feel like it, right? Make a common denominator that way, right? In this case, our, our purpose, what's wrong with the problem, is the i in the denominator. I don't want that to be there. I want i to be a real number. I don't want i to be an imaginary number, right? So I can't just make i into a real number because it is imaginary, so I need it to go away. And I know i squared is equal to a real number. So what I want to do is I want to change i into i squared, and I do that by multiplying by i. Okay. Multiplying by i, because i is the imaginary part of that number. I want it to become i squared, and I know i times i makes i squared. But fraction world, I'm allowed to do that only if I multiply the entire numerator by i also. So again, I don't want i on the bottom. Multiplying i times i makes i squared, which is a real number, no i at all. And I'm allowed to multiply top and bottom of a fraction by the same thing. Once I've done that step, I'm going to carry out the multiplication using whatever is necessary to do it. On the top, I've got a binomial structure times one thing, so I have to do the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply i times 7. And I'm going to multiply i times negative 3i. When you multiply a letter times a letter, you add the powers. i times i makes i squared on top for that 3. When you multiply a number and a letter, you just stick the number and letter together. 7 times i is 7i. 3i times i, the i's make i squared, the 3 comes along for the right. On the bottom, I have a single object 5i times a single object i. So when you have pluses and minuses, you have multiple objects. When there's no pluses and minuses, you have single objects. So single object 5i times single object i. 5 is just a number. i times i makes i squared. Again, my goal at that moment in time was I want the denominator to be i squared because i squared is a real number and I want the denominator to be real. So once I've done that step, now it's a matter of simplifying. Anytime you're dealing with i's, if it looks like this, it has to look like this. If you have i to a power specifically, not just any of those, 
Specifically, it looks like any of, turn off this highlight, there we go. It looks like any of these, or even that. If it's i to a power bigger than one, it has to be fixed. I don't want any of these structures here. I want i or negative one or negative i or positive one. That's all I want. So I don't want i squared. I don't want i squared. I want negative one. Because that's what i squared equals, and it's more simple. So if I do that, I've got 7i minus 3 times negative 1 over 5 times negative 1. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But again, all I did there was a substitution. You can see here, i squared I replaced with negative 1. i squared down here replaced with negative 1. This 3 is being multiplied by i squared. This 5 is being multiplied by i squared. So the substitutions get multiplied. And the final couple steps here, again, it says a plus bi form on your paper, right? Um, this is not a plus bi form. First off, what um, Alicia was mentioning, the two negatives make a positive. This is a product right here. The minus sign is part of the product. 3 times 1 is 3, 2 minuses make it plus. So I'm going to get 7i plus 3. On the bottom, I've got negative 5. Now, when it says a plus bi form, it wants a real number followed by an imaginary number. That's what it wants. That's the structure it wants. All right? The order on top is wrong. The real's in back, the uh, imaginary's in front. That's the first thing. And the other thing is it's all over five, negative 5. So the last thing I want to do here with this problem to make it in the structure they're asking me for is I want to separate it into two fractions. Very simple to do. And I want to put the real thing in first. So can everybody see the three is the real part? So I'm going to put the three in front. I'm going to put that over the denominator. And I'm going to put the imaginary in the back and put that over the denominator. Reduce fractions if possible. Does three fifths reduce? Does seven fifths reduce? So oh, that should be seven over negative five, though, right? When you have multiple things over the same thing, you just put the first thing or one thing over the bottom, the other thing over the bottom like that. And again, I rearranged it so the order was right. You only do the right one first. I, I do the real one first. The real, the real one happens to be the right one, oh, the imaginary. Yeah. So again, you're going to have a real and imaginary on top. Typically, when you do this, the real goes in front. Okay. All right? So that's the right answer. A simpler form of the right answer, plus negative is the same as minus, right? So if I was finishing out this answer to make the most beautiful final answer possible, I'd write negative 3 fifths minus 7i over 5. That's how I'd write my final answer on that one. Uh, it doesn't really matter where the minus sign goes in that first fraction, but usually we put them on top, so that's where I'd probably put it. But again, that's, that's how you finish it out. But again, the whole thing, this entire problem stemmed from the idea i in the denominator is illegal. So this is how you get rid of i in the denominator. Make i squared happen. And then real on the bottom at that point is just simplifying things.